Blind Sky from the comparatively small team at Hello Games is a game balancing on a tightrope. It is both indie and mainstream, confoundingly huge and yet incredibly personal. The game is straddling the lines of two of the biggest genres that exist in modern gaming and not quite managing to exemplify either. To start, reasons you may not like No Man's Sky. Well, those who, feel, those who dislike procedural generation and the caveats for gameplay that infers will probably not enjoy this game. Those who cannot manage the almost complete lack of player direction after a certain point will have trouble with this game. If you don't like survival games, you're not likely to enjoy this game. And if you want an MMO with multiplayer, this is not that game. Try EVE, or Elite Dangerous, or Star Citizen. Otherwise, keep going. No Man's Sky begins with your character waking on a random planet on the outskirts of the galaxy. Your ship has crashed. With your launch systems offline, you must grab your handy multi-tool, functional as a weapon and a mining tool, and try and find the resources on your planet to get yourself back to full capacity. This opening sequence is your tutorial for the survival aspects of the game. You'll also be given the option to go accept the Atlas missions. You should accept those. They give the early game a direction to follow, plus help you access some useful tech and resource a lot easier. Refusal, while allowing for more freedom of exploration in the story, doesn't really serve any benefit. You can always just ignore the map markers. It's always an option. There's an overarching storyline, which is the trappings of depth, concerned with the meanings of existence and the importance of self-determination. But you can just ignore that and go explore and head towards the center of the universe or wherever you like. Honestly though, in the early game there are issues. Early wobbles while the game finds its feet. While the game does tell you what you need to collect for the repairs to your ship, it doesn't provide any hand-holding, so you have to either explore and investigate the objects around you, or wait for the game to take pity and highlight what you need. This is expanded by the game's habit of telling you things once, and then leaving you done with it. It's frustrating. Thematically, I get it. The game pushes you to just look around, scan everything you see, and see what's out there. The tutorial is essential for the player to allow, to keep, allow the player to keep refueling their ship, and also for the basic understanding of how the planet side gameplay works. And for the first planet, it's incredible. Unimaginable expanse beyond you, with a relative day-night cycle happening and potentially a whole ecosystem of life to discover. You gaze and wonder at strange landscapes and literal alien skies. And then, after you gather the essential resources, which are fairly plentiful, you get the chance to head back into orbit. This is the second great moment in the game. The early wobbles give way to confidence and determination. The game comes alive, you burst through the atmosphere and see asteroids everywhere, ships and stations skirting around dotted the periphery of your vision, and then you see your first planet from space. In my case, it was quickly dwarfed by my second planet, appearing right behind it, much larger and rising into view. The simplified flying controls encourage the player not to waste time. Just boost to the next location and flying down onto a planet or into a space station feels like the start of a whole other game on its own. There's a rumble of re-entry, and you watch as the landscape filters into view. I understand if it's not for everyone, but the way the ground filters into view in a sort of shimmering way still looks very pretty to me. It's mostly to disguise the raw distance, but it has the effect of making it seem like the planet is being unveiled by your ship as you arrive through the atmosphere. After some scavenging and more flying, you'll likely meet your first alien in one of the randomly scattered outposts, where you'll encounter my favourite mechanic in the game, the language system. If you find monoliths or runes while travelling around planets, you'll learn specific words from one of the factional languages. When you encounter that word in your interactions with alien life then, that word will be translated from their dialogue. These interactions consist of each being presented with a situation, and it comes down to selecting one of three result responses. Depending on your understanding of the language in question, you can make an educated decision. Or just guess and hope. Every time I see an outpost or a trade port, I head straight for the aliens. The writing from what I've been able to understand, has been very solid, with every engagement being very, very entertaining, if a little simple. And that's your first R or three with the game, depending on how quickly you start pushing through everything I've described. You've probably been playing all in one go, rushing to see and do as much as possible. And that's the problem with No Man's Sky. It encourages the player to do everything. There's an implicit reading of urgency there. With the quintillion planet-wide universe and the relative sameness of the planetary generation, this results in pattern recognition as the player starts to see, to see the seams of the algorithm. And that leads to frustration, because 
going back to the tightrope metaphor, trying to run on a tightrope and do everything at once tends to make everything fall. There is a completely wrong way to play this game for most players. Compulsively demanding more and consuming every new horizon like candy only diminishes the whole. And this is not the player's fault. The mechanics encourage this in their own way. Everything is simplified. Spaceship and combat controls don't encourage you to engage in either as lock-on systems make them generic and almost trite. The boosting system is essential to space travel, but it suggests to the player that everything they do should be fast-paced and all at once and quick. And the inventory system is limited and demands you constantly adapt and manage resources, only gathering small quantities of anything you need. There's no encouragement to build or build build up a, a stockpile or encourage you to stop and pick up new things. You have to keep your plutonium, you have to keep your iron, you have to keep your carbon. And these are all flaws. The demand for urgency and motion they create negatively affects the game. Can't be denied. Regardless of what else is or isn't in the game, these systems end up letting it down. And this is a shame. Playing No Man's Sky in relaxed bursts is a much better idea. Just placing one foot in front of each other and taking your time. Letting yourself be engulfed by the game and enjoying the minor variations that make each creature or world unique is what makes this game special. My absolute favourite moments so far have been the times that the game has just left me to explore and wonder about what is going on. Finding an abandoned observatory, solving the logic puzzle in the computer there, I was rewarded with a distress signal in another star system. After five minutes of finding some resources to allow me to move on, I warp in, and in the time it takes me to get my bearings, a whole fleet of freighters have warped in around me, filling the void in a blaze of light and a cacophony of engines. I make my way to the source of the distress signal. It's a crashed ship on a toxic world, somehow thriving with life. I land, and I survey the damage, considering whether to take the time to repair it. I turn to survey the landscape to see what materials are here in case it makes the job easier. And what I see is a beautiful sunrise over the coast far in the distance with gigantic sky snakes flying around and forming darting silhouettes. And that's what No Man's Sky is. Those moments. Honestly, it sometimes feels more like Proteus or its kin. A walking simulator where you should just enjoy the sheer act of existing in this space. It's not built to be just a survival game. And that's how I feel this game should be treated. An occasional adventure, exploring planets and ambling around. Take the tightrope slow. Enjoy the view up there. For a game that desperately tries to ape 70s sci-fi imagery, those wonderful images of far-flung stars and explorers and distant lands, I actually find myself thinking of Blade Runner the Tannhauser Gate speech specifically. In one speech, a whole universe of moments beyond the film is conjured up, beyond the audience's understanding and filled with mystery. And that's how I feel when I try and talk about my enjoyment of No Man's Sky. At times this game is incredible, at times this game is infuriating. But if you're willing to take your well, wait for your moments and push through this game with its awkwardly implemented systems and gameplay that's honestly a little bit frustrating. This is an experience that conveys an entire universe of astounding moments. <laughs>